The Giver, Chapter 23. Jonas felt more and more certain that the destination lay ahead of him very near now in the night that was approaching elsewhere. None of his senses confirmed it. He saw nothing ahead except the endless ribbon of a road unfolding in twisting narrow curves. He heard no sound ahead. Yet he felt it, felt that elsewhere was not far away. And he had little hope left that he would be able to reach it not when the sharp, cold air began to blur and thicken with swirling white. It's called snow, Gabe. Snowflakes. They fall down from the sky, and they're very, very beautiful. Gabe? There was no response from the child who had once been so curious and alert. Warily, he remounted the bicycle. In the best conditions, the looming hill would have been a difficult ride, but now... The rapidly deepening snow obscured the narrow road. The front wheel moved forward imperceptibly as he pushed on the pedals with his numb, exhausted legs. But the bicycle stopped. It would not move. For a moment, he thought how easy it would be to drop beside the bicycle himself, to let himself and Gabriel slide into the softness of snow, the darkness of night, the warm comfort of sleep. But he had come this far. He must try to go on. He pressed his hands into Gabriel's back and tried to remember. But the moment passed. As he approached the summit of the hill, at last something began to happen. He was happened. He was not warmer. If anything, he felt more numb and cold. He was not less exhausted. On the contrary, he could barely move his freezing tired legs, but he began suddenly to feel happy. He began to recall happy times. He remembered his parents and his sister. He remembered his friends, Asher and Fiona. He remembered the giver. Memories of joy flooded through him suddenly. We're almost there, Gabriel. I remember this place, Gabe. He knew this time there would be no ice, no fall, no pain. Inside his freezing body, his heart surged with hope. He started down. Jonas felt himself losing consciousness and with his whole being willed himself to stay upright atop the sled, clutching Gabriel, keeping him safe. The runners sliced through the snow and the wind whipped at his face as they sped in a straight line through an incision that seemed to lead to a final destination, the place he had always felt was waiting, elsewhere. And all at once he could see light, and he recognized them now. He knew they were shining through the windows of rooms, that they twinkled from trees in places where families created and kept memories, where they celebrated love. Suddenly he was aware with certainty and joy, that below, ahead, they were waiting for him, and that they were waiting, too, for the baby. For the first time, he heard something he knew to be music. He heard people singing. Behind him, across vast distances of space and time, from the place he had left, he thought he heard music, too. But perhaps it was only an echo.